Hi, my name is Kevin Taylor. I would like to ask, has the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, been truthful to Ghanaians? This is with all your respect. So with all due respect, now before I start today's episode, I would like to do what I call the rough cut. Actually, the rough cut is when I respond to a few things quickly and clear them out of the way, then we go to the main event. So before I start today's episode, I'm going to do a little bit of a rough cut and respond to a few things and also put Ghanaians back on track. Yes, put Ghanaians back on track so that they can focus on the real issues. Now, my first rough cut is to J.J. Rawlings. I would like to tell ex-president Rawlings that, Mr. President, shut up. Shut up and don't talk about corruption. If you want to talk about corruption, tell us what you did with Abacha money. J.J. Rawlings. So this is a simple advice. Shut up and don't talk about corruption because you have lost that integrity. You've lost that respect amongst the youth and the ordinary Ghanaian. Now, my second rough card goes to the vice president, Dr. Baumia. I know of late he has been jumping like a frog from one region to the other making a mess of himself, lying because he has been cursed to lie. You know, this man, from the day he left the shores of Ghana to go receive medical treatment in London, that was the day he was supposed to be kicked out as the vice president of Ghana, period. He did not show respect. This same person comes back and tells us that he can help us. He can help the health industry. He can help the economy. He can help employment. This guy is a liar. So, cursed by Omiya, I will tell you to shut up and just keep mute. Stay in that corner in the Jubilee house and always be the cleaner boy. Mr. Baumia, out of respect, I will say shut up and concentrate online. The next rough cut is to Kweku Bako. It is a pity that Kweku Bako has become a puppet and he has made the work called journalism one of the most unlucrative, yes, unattractive jobs in Ghana. Kweku Bako said this in 2014 and he said this now in 2019. This man has passed that level of disgrace. He has passed that level of dishonesty. Kwekubako is a disgrace to journalists in Ghana. But I'm not surprised because the, the elderly say something. It's an old saying and it goes that you can never entrust the future of your kids to an impotent man. Kwekubako, a word to be wise is enough. Now, I would like to talk to my old friend, Mensa Otabo. Your friend, Danka Williams, just came out to talk on the CSE issue. He actually wasn't bold enough to direct his anger to the president by calling the president out. He tried to play around the whole issue. I'll give him five out of ten. He needs to come back again and be honest, bold, to look into the face of the president and tell him, Mr. President, you are a liar and that you should not accept this CSE into our kids' curriculum. Mensa Otabo, you have been watching too many animals now. The Nat Geo channel is now very weak. I would like you to come out boldly and speak on this CSE issue. If you say you are a real man of God. Now, I would like Ghanaians to also understand that PDS, yeah, the PDS scandal hasn't gone away. It's still lingering. It's still hanging around. We don't have to forget when we come on social media, when we go on radio, when we're speaking to our friends, there's one question we have to be asking. We need to ask who is behind a major AS of Angola. That is the only question you need to ask. We need to know the people behind a major AS of Angola that took that percentage in the PDS scandal. Don't also forget to ask who is the brain behind Thriller in Manila. Now, I'd like to tell Napo that he can't play politics with our education. Whatever he's saying today that whatever they are doing today is going to pay off tomorrow. We are not in the business of you know, doing politics with education. If he thinks what he's doing today is going to pay off in 2020, then I would like to tell Napo that he is drinking from a madman's cup. Now, the final one goes to my friend, Mr. 1962 Kennedy of Japan. Mr. Japan, read my lips. I am not done with you. Your silence or you being quiet does not mean that I'm going to let this slide. No, I'm still going to push so you come out and confess that you know something about the JB Damkwa issue. Now, the reason why I say this is because in the statement of Daniel, yes, Sexy Dondon, he stated it in his statement which is with the police CID, it is with the IGP, and it is with the Attorney General that you contracted him to kill J.B. Dankwa. 
And until we come to the bottom of this, I am not done with you. Eugenia also said, I should tell you that keep mute. Eugenia of Newark in New Jersey says, I should tell you to keep mute. That is it for the rough cut. No, and before I finish the rough cut, there's this gentleman. He, he, this guy, he always interviews Kennedy Japan. His name is um, Justice Anan. You know, this guy in 2010, this Justice Anan of Net2, in 2010 was arrested in parliament. Yes, he used to work with the informal newspaper. In 2010, this guy, <laughs> this criminal interviewing a criminal, he was arrested in parliament. He, was, he broke into the car of Honorable Balado Menu. He broke into the car of Honorable Balado Menu. That issue was reported at the Ghana police um, headquarters. And I have a copy of that here. He should come out and deny that. You know, I don't have time to be displaying these documents because these guys, they are not relevant to me. So Justice Anand, when you were arrested in 2010 for breaking into the car of Honorable Balado Menu in Parliament. Yes, when they were inside there, busy, you were breaking into cars and you were arrested by the police. And this is on record and I have it here. So I want you to come on your concert party show and say that it did not happen. And I'll prove to Ghanaians that you are just a little tiny, a little tiny lizard. I want to deal with the 1962 myself. You cannot obstruct me. I am focused like a lion. Now, let's focus and talk about today's story. With all due respect, if you carefully study and analyze Martin Amidu's statement, there's one thing he keeps saying. The special prosecutor sounds like a man who wants to be pushed out by the powers that employed him. Yes, Martin Amidu, he wants to be pushed out. The special prosecutor for some time has been given the signs of disappointment in this country, specifically his disappointment in this government because he knew from the day he was sworn in or appointed that this president and his government wanted to use him as a puppet to achieve and fulfill their political promise. Martin Amidu, who is a special prosecutor, always makes a particular statement. And that statement is, I will die on my sword. This is a very, 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 very particular statement Martin Amidu always makes. He says, I will die on my sword. To every Ghanaian, such statement sounds honest bold and truthful because it actually shows how brave, how truthful that individual who made that, that statement looks, yes, or is. Now, but my question is, has the special prosecutor himself, the special prosecutor, Martin Abidu, been truthful to Ghanaians all this while? Your guess should be as clear as mine, but we are in the very unpredictable era where angels promote the devil's agenda. I'll say this again. We are in a very unpredictable era where angels promote the devil's agenda. Today, I will be revealing why the special prosecutor knows for a fact that he has not been truthful to Ghanaians and that deep down, he also legally, he also legally knows he can never prosecute anyone found to have involved in any corrupt act in or out of government. Today, I can emphatically watch my lips. Today, I can emphatically announce that the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, does not have a legal document giving him that mandate to be the special prosecutor of Ghana. He does not. In simple words, Martin Amidu does not have an appointment letter. I'm saying this and I'm saying this again. And Martin Amidu should come out and say I am lying. He does not have an official appointment letter he has signed to confirm. Martin Amidu is working without an official letter. Now, some people will be like, ah, but how? Now, I am going to explain to you. So, before Martin Amidu was appointed as a special prosecutor, his job was explained to him verbally. Basically, his scope of work, what he can do and what he can't do, his salary and benefits. Be very mindful of this word, his salary and benefits. And also, when and how he will be paid. Now, because this precedent and this government were in a rush to fulfill their promise to Ghanaians without thinking through their actions, they actually told Martin Amidu his appointment letter was going to be ready right after the president officially appoints him and reveal him to Ghanaians. Martin as a lawyer, Martin Amidu as a lawyer and also very eager to occupy the position failed to ask for the appointment letter to verify what was written in it. Yes, Martin was so excited. He was so bitter to take revenge on some people. So he failed to ask for the appointment letter to verify what was written in it. This is Martin Amidu I'm talking about, the special prosecutor and one of the best legal brains in Ghana. 
What do you think will make such a legal brain accept such, such offer without seeing his appointment letter? Your guess is as good as mine. Martin was too bitter, as I've said already. Too bitter to think of the consequences that would follow the job he was accepting. But with all due respect, now after Martin Amido accepted the job, he realized that the appointment letter didn't really address his concerns about his scope of work and most importantly, most importantly, his salary, his benefits. So what did Martin Amido do? He then writes to the presidency, specifically to the executive secretary, to the president, Asante Bedieto, copying all the necessary people about this appointment letter and how he does not agree with it and how he wanted it to be rewritten for him to accept, meaning for him to sign, for it to become a legal document. So basically, Martin Amidu said he does not accept that letter and that they should rewrite the appointment letter so that he can sign and move on with his work. Bedieto received the letter. He smiled and sent a message, text message to Martin Amidu and said that the president does not have time for such nonsense. He even refused to return emails and phone calls from Martin Amidu concerning his appointment letter. So as we speak, my fellow Ghanaians, Martin Amidu is an imposter being paid without taxes. Yes, Martin Amidu does not have any legal backing. He does not have an appointment letter. He does not have any right to invite, to investigate or even prosecute any Ghanaian because he does not have the legal backing to do so. I dare Martin Amidu. Yes, I am daring Martin Amidu and the government to prove me wrong. I'm also daring the Accountant General to come out and say they have a copy of Martin Amidu's appointment letter and they have to show us how much Martin Amidu has to be paid. I have documents to prove what I am saying, my fellow Ghanaians. I have documents. I have the original appointment letter of Martin Amidu. I'm giving these three people, these three officers, yes, the government, the presidency, the secretary to the president, the president's office, I'm giving Martin Amidu, I'm daring Martin Amidu to, and the Accountant General. I am daring the Accountant General to come out and tell us the truth. They can come out and say, I am lying, and I'll prove to them that I have facts more than them. I know the government will try and rectify or manipulate this, but in the attempt, I'll bring up more questions than answers because it is a trap I have set for them. I have the true copy of Martin Amidu's first appointment letter he did not agree with. With all due respect, now I have a simple question for the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu. So, Martin Amidu, as an apostle of integrity, on what legal basis has government been paying you? Martin, listen to this very well. As an apostle of integrity, on what legal basis has the government of Ghana been paying you? And, what, and on what legal basis have you been taking that salary when you know for a fact that you don't have an official appointment letter? signed by you accepting the job the government gave you. At this point, Mr. Special Prosecutor, you have not been able to prosecute anyone. So the question is, why are you still in the job? This is what convinced people like us that you are into this job just to make money for yourself. To me, I would say you have not been truthful to the people of Ghana because in the past, you emphatically told some Ghanaians who occupied sensitive positions in this country to resign if they can't do the job. So I advise you to resign because you have failed the people of this country. You have not been truthful. You have allowed this government to use you to lie to Ghanaians for no reason. Legally, you don't even have the right to invite, investigate, or even prosecute anyone in Ghana because you do not have the legal backing to do so. Mr. Amidu, I know you're a man who believes in integrity. So please, humbly, humbly resign if you think this government is a criminal enterprise that wants to use you to win political sympathy. Mr. Amidu, as you always say, that you want to die on your own sword. Make sure that the sword you will die on will be a sword you personally held and trusted, but not a sword you carried illegally out of hatred and greed for some people. This is just an advice to you, Mr. Prosecutor. I am just a messenger. A messenger without a Quran or a Bible in my hand. A messenger who speaks truth to power. Take this my advice and you can claim back that your integrity. My fellow Ghanaians, my name is Kevin Ekobedu Taylor and all that you heard here is with all due respect.